Welcome, everyone. We are here. It's the Italian Heritage Month podcast. I have my friend Vincent here from North Carolina. He has three pizzerias down there, a big follower of the page, and I had to have him on. He's just a great inspiration for holding the Italian, Italian heritage uh, tradition and all the traditions close to him. So I had to have him, have him on. Welcome, Vincent. How are you doing today, man? Great. How are you, Lorenzo? Good to see you. I know we had your daughter come and help you out with the Zoom. You know, you're so you're so focused on making great pizza and keeping the culture alive. We got to, we we, we uh, had a little help bringing the Zoom call to all together. That's right. That's right. Thanks for my <laughs> thanks to my daughter. That uh, you know, the old school pizza man is not big on technology. So you teach her how to make sauce, and she teaches you how to do Zoom. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to have you on today because, man, like you're one of the people that you know from following your page and whatnot, you definitely hold true to the Italian culture between your restaurants, uh, the sauce making, you know, the fiat outside your restaurant. It, it's like you do everything the right way. And I wanted to have you on to kind of talk about your journey, your story, because I know you were originally from, from uh, you know, the New York area, and now you're down, down south in North Carolina, and you brought it down there many years ago. Now people are following down, especially if this cold is Corona stuff. So I want you to kind of tell me about a little bit about that. So uh, when we get started, I, one question I like to get started with is your favorite memory of Italy. Oh, gosh. I mean, uh, I have so many, but uh, I think probably my favorite uh, is, you know, my wife and I went there on our honeymoon. Mm. And uh, that was really my first trip there. So, uh you know, I got to meet so much of my wife's family and where's she from? Uh, she's from Sicily. Nice. And uh, yeah. And a lot of her family now uh, is, is spread out all over Italy. So uh, we get to see, you know, a lot of Italy by visiting family because they're now a lot of them are in the north. Uh, but some of them are still the old schoolers still hold it down in Sicily. So, uh, yeah, we get to see a lot of uh, we get to see a lot of family and a lot of Italy by by going when we go. Um, but yeah, we spent half of our honeymoon going throughout, uh, we did like a tour and, uh, you know, we saw a bunch of cities and then we spent the second half of it, uh, with family. So that was, that was a great trip. Just, you know, just spending it with family and, you know, aunts and uncles, you know, and mm -hmm. just around the table, you know, wine and, uh, you know, good local food. That's what I'm it's really all hoping about. this all gets cleared up before next year. Cause I have my plans of going in for, for like a definitely September, potentially again for olive oil season to do olive yeah. oil. So I'm hoping this all gets cleared up. I, I agree. I mean, for me, you know, when when we go back, you know, it's hard because we want to see family, but at the same time, there are still parts of Italy that we haven't seen yet. And oh, you gotta go see the family though. You gotta course. put a few I mean, days at least. <laughs> and there's, otherwise, the, the Italian guilt is just just bury you. So yeah, you have to do that stuff. So, but yeah, I mean, there's still you know parts of Italy that we want to see. So you know, I mean, Italy offers so much from from top to bottom. Mm. So yeah, we we just you know uh, we really want to go and spend a month or two there just to you know to cover a lot of bases. You know, one of the reasons, one of the when I want to get into, so I, I wanted to have you on in the first place is. I like have like this business side of me too, right? Like, and you went to a new place, a new territory. Was didn't have too much of Italian culture down there, Italian food in general. And you right. built this, this like, um, you know, a few different restaurants with different types of concepts. And you know, your branding's on point, your marketing's on point, the, the food's on point. You know, you sent me one of your hats that you're wearing right now, and I love that hat. Wear it all the time. I actually wore it yesterday. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, you just do a good job. So I kind of want you to just go and tell me a little bit about how this all got started, like when you moved down there and just kind of like the hurdles that you've had to go through since moving your life and business down. Yeah, well, you know, I think part of, uh, you know, and it really ties back to Italian immigration because, you know, we, uh, you know, our relatives immigrated from Italy to a new land. and. Um, we immigrated from New York to North Carolina, you know, so that uh, that part of our story is, you know, inspired by, you know, what came before us. And, and um, you know, North Carolina had its challenges because, like you said, there's not a lot of Italian influence down here. So, uh, you know, we decided we were going to bring it. You know what I mean? So uh, for us. 
uh, we just do what we knew. I mean, we mm-hmm. did, uh, you know, there was, there was, you know, obviously fear of the unknown, but that's what our relatives had when they came here. So, you know, that's, I think that's what inspired us to do what we're doing. Uh, How long ago was that? That uh, we, we moved down here uh, 23 years ago. Wow. So, so you yeah, ahead of the curve years. for sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, you know, uh, the short story is that, you know, my, my brother-in-laws and my wife's family had a business that they moved from uh, New York down to North Carolina. And, um, you know, they, uh, you know, they moved their business down and both my wife and I had worked for them at the time. And, um, you know, when we got here, you know, I really felt like, you know, we had opportunity just like our immigrants did, uh, you know, our immigrant families did when they came, there was opportunity here for us to do our own thing. So that's, you know, really what, you know, what we did. And so you have three places now, correct? Yes, that is correct. So tell me about those three places. Cause they're a little bit different. You have like one, right. One's kind of like takeout more oriented. Then you got Novanto, which is more of like real traditional food. You got some great pizzas on there. You got two beautiful ovens. Yeah. So, um, you know, I grew up in New York making New York style pizza. Um, so, you know, we got down here, you know, there really, especially 23 years ago, there really wasn't a lot of good pizza at all down here. So that was really the gate, the gateway for us, you know, to say, you know, I did, I did some research and, you know, I talked to a lot of people that were moving down from the North and some that were here already. And, you know, I asked them where they bought their pizza and, you know, I, I went to those places to see what they were like. And, um, you know, it was, uh, you know, for me, we had eaten, you know, the, the kind of, uh, moment where I knew was we had been invited out by another couple to have dinner at this restaurant that was local to us. And, um, the, the wait was like an hour and a half and the food was terrible and the service was terrible. And, you know, I looked at my wife and I said, if this is what is the best around and people are waiting for this, I said, I think we can do what we do. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. so that was kind of, the, that was kind of the, the light bulb moment for us. You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, it was exciting, um, you know, to kind of build that first restaurant for us. Um, my brother moved down a couple of years later and we opened another pizzeria in New York style as well. My brother makes New York style pizza as well. Mm-hmm. He grew up, both of us kind of grew up in the business. Uh, so we've always been around it. Um, and then, you know, we've added partners and opened other restaurants. And, you know, I think at one time we've had up to six, seven pizzerias at one time. And then we've, you know, bought and sold and, and closed and, and, you know, had all the trials and tribulations of, of entrepreneurship and restaurant ownership. And, uh, you know, so we've, you know, continued to grow from that and getting better and sharpen our pencil and, and doing, you know, all the things that, uh, you know, that an entrepreneur does. So, uh, and, you know, with that Italian passion and spirit that we have, uh, that's how we move forward. So, uh, you know, that what, you know, for me as a, as a, uh, entrepreneur and a, a foodie, you know, I'm very much a traditionalist. So, you know, when it comes to even something as simple as pizza, you know, I'm a basic guy. I'm not, you know, I'm not piling on toppings. I'm not, you know, I'm a, I'm a purist, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, years ago when, uh, and not that many years ago when the kind of Neapolitan thing started coming back around, that was like, that was like heaven for me because we were going back to that real old school style Fire, pizza, wood. pizza from Italy, right? Yeah. Fire and wood, yeah. and you know, pure ingredients, clean. Uh, you know, my wife and I had really been kind of going in the organic, you know, natural food stuff for ourselves personally in the household, anyway. So mm. you know that that really spoke to me. So just over five years ago, we uh, you know started a plan to you know to open a Neapolitan style, and that's how Novanta got born. Uh, as it's well, and that, restaurant. thank you. And, and, you know, that one, uh, you know, has its own story, but you know, the, uh, you know, and even down here on top of the New York style, then the Neapolitan, because we were really one of the first ones in Charlotte 
and one of the first few in North Carolina uh, to have mm-hmm. a Neapolitan style. And that that hurdle and challenge has its own because, you know, people aren't used to that style of pizza. And that's a constant training of customer and training of staff and, and you know, showing You're people getting, what that could be like. There's been such an influx of Northeasterners down to the Carolinas that I'm sure you've gotten more business traffic and newer faces and whatnot coming down to try the pizza. I mean, Absolutely. I have, I have a, a handful of people just in my inner circle that I've known moved to down there in the last few years. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, we've built, you know, uh, you know, our current pizzeria is the New York style. And then, mm-hmm. you know, now the Neapolitan style is, you know, really built on, you know, that Northeastern uh, influx mm-hmm. of people. I mean, I mean, I've met, you know, so many New Yorkers over the last 22 years. Uh, and even, you know, I say New Yorkers, but, you know, people from Connecticut and people from New Jersey and, and uh, you know, that area that, you know, that recognize what we're doing and, and appreciate it. I mean, you know, I've had so many customers over the years just, you know, thank God you're here. <laughs> so we, we said, we, I enjoy those moments. You know, those are the yeah. moments that are important to me. You know, so. so I want you to tell me something else, like aside from the business now, because, you know, one thing I want you to highlight and, and something that you've always kept, I love seeing the pictures of you doing the sauce. Yeah. Everyone always, everyone goes crazy over sauce day, but I got to say, one of the people that do, does it the biggest is you, you know, you got a <laughs> lot of jars, dude. That's a lot of yeah. jars, man. I think the joke that you need a crane to like pick them up because you got some, how many you do? Uh, you know, uh, the, you know, the backstory on that is, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. like you and like many Italian Americans, you know, we're trying to hold on to, you know, a lot of those traditions mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, were passed on to us and given to us from, you know, from family. I mean, that, you know, that's the core for us is our family, right? So, you know, we, um, you know, years ago, uh, when my, my mother-in-law was alive, you know, we used to do the jarring and we used to all get together and, and do it. Um, and, you know, my, my mother-in-law passed away in the early nineties. And, and then in the late nineties, we moved down here to North Carolina. So, you know, there was a pretty good gap of time that we, we, you know, you know, you just, some people just let go of traditions and it happens and, you know, life happens and a lot of things happen. And, um, you know, I, I forget when it happened to me, but, you know, I started talking about it a couple of years ago and I said, you know, we have to bring, especially down here in North Carolina, we have to keep these traditions up. Let's bring the sauce one back. And, um, and I bought a machine, actually, Italian friend of mine, uh, his father-in-law had a guy in New York that could get me the machine because down here was like, you know, that piece of machinery was like, might as well come from uh, Mars, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I got a guy that got a guy that helped me out and get the machine, you know, and that was it. Once we got the machine, then it was, you know, uh, you know, my my in-laws and, you know, we have my mom had moved down here years later and my brother, obviously, and. So, you know, there's a, a good amount of us here now. So when we all get together and do it, it's it's an important day for us to, you know, and, mm-hmm. and they've talked about it on the Italian American podcast about it being kind of a family reunion kind of thing. So that's kind of what it is, all of us to get together and do it. And uh, so we the last couple of years, we did about a thousand pounds. Um, ended up with, I think, you know, years past around 300 jars or whatever. And um, this this past uh, September. We ended up adding some families. A couple of people moved down. Uh, yeah. Actually, my wife's cousin from your neck of the woods in Comac just moved okay. down this past uh, couple months. So uh, we added another family. So we had to have enough sauce for, I think it was 14 or 15 families. So uh, so we ended up with, I think, 370 something jars this year. So uh, we added, we actually added a machine too. So we got another, another, got another tomato machine. grinder. Yeah. So, you know, you know, my younger nephews love it, you know, like everybody, you know, loves just getting together and, and, you know, having a cool family day and and making the sauce and what's your role. Everyone's got a role. You're right. You're right. You know, I'm, (laughs) I've been, I've been from from day one, kind of the coordinator, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, uh, 
you know, I'm kind of the big cheese now, you know what I mean? Like I've yeah, taken yeah, that yeah. role where it's like, I organize it. I order the tomatoes, you know, I, I'm, I'm slowly kind of, you know, the, uh, you know, again, in my entrepreneurship, um, you know, I'm becoming the CEO of this thing, you yeah. know what I mean? Where, you know, my, I my bro see, I could see you and, work in the machine. I can see you working at putting oh, the tomatoes in the machine. Absolutely. You, you're like, I guess you being like, that's like the, you know, I would say a very important step. I think that's like a higher position, even though it's a dirty position. Yeah. I think you can't just come off the street and, and put, start putting tomatoes in that machine. That's not, that's no, not how absolutely. it works. And, 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 you know, now I kind of, <laughs> and, and, you know, over the years, I, I used to spend a lot of time on that machine. And now as the years, you know, pass, I'm, yeah, I'm you putting somebody else on the machine. <laughs> I got to go over the other parts to make sure they're doing it right. And I got to go over the jarring section and make sure they're doing it right. And, yeah. you know, check on my nephew's doing the cooking and make sure he's doing that right. So, you know, yeah, it's, uh, you know, with typical Italians is there's a lot of chiefs and not enough Indians, but, you know, we, we have fun and, uh, you know, it's just Funny, a great, great day. In my family, we, my, my aunt is the, we call her the chief. Yeah, <laughs> like our group chat. Our group chat is chief and Indians. Like we labeled my aunt as the chief of the family. Yeah, and the chief in training is not the oldest girl. To be honest, not even the second oldest girl. It's the my younger girl cousin who's twenty years old now, but she's like just tough. She, yeah, <laughs> she's like she's like born and bred to be like that. That you know what I mean? That in that role. Yeah. You need that, yeah. You need. I'm it. the I'm the foreman, right? I like I I still got a boss, but I'm yeah. over there. Like I do a little bit of everything. I'm kind of like. Hey, <laughs> now hey we got to keep muscle. those traditions up, and we got to pass them on yeah. to the next generations, right? No, it's the best, and like it's great because the boys are getting a little older. Because before I was kind of like the you know my dad doesn't really do it, my uncle Nicky doesn't really do. It. He brings over the bread. Um, Pasquale is a chef; he's usually working. So I was always like the muscle, like I was at the pick everything up. And now my yeah. younger boy cousins are like bigger than me. So now I got a little more, got a little more muscle around me. So I'm, I'm like ordering, Hey, do this, do that. Like there a, you go. There you go. I'm moving up the chain a little bit. <laughs> That's it. And That's awesome. not just putting basil in anymore. He's I got to, um, I got to uh, definitely, I want people who are in that North Carolina area because I know a lot of people are thinking about moving down or, you know, I think I mentioned someone one, you, the other last week that I had a friend of mine that's literally going to be moving down. You know, a bunch of people have moved down. I know a few people from Carl Place uh, in Westbury, they kind of started the trend now. One of them moved down, followed by another and another and another. Yeah, yep. that's I gotta, how it I got to have them come down because I think they're in the area because they, they need to, they'll be good customers of yours. Yeah, have, sure. have, have, absolutely. Sure. Please have them come and see me. You know, I, you know, we've, you know, we've built our business on, you know, uh, just that old school Italian New York way of, you know, mm. uh, you know, knowing people and, you know, kissing babies and, you know, our whole social <laughs> lives have been built around a restaurant. You know what I mean? Uh, all the guys that I play golf with or, uh, you know, socialize with or any of that, I've all, I've met everybody through the pizzeria. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, as you know, growing up, you know, you had a local pizzeria, you knew the owners, you knew the people, they knew you, yeah, they knew your brother, they knew your sister, they knew, you know, they knew your uncle, they knew your family, you know, so that's, we've what, done that here. What's, I got to say, what is the biggest difference making the pizza there versus New York? Is there a big difference? Honestly, I mean, I do everything that I did in New York. So exactly the I same. don't think there's, yeah, exactly the same. So the, really to me, there is no difference. Um, yeah, I you mean, know, I think most of the stuff is going to be like the flour, the cheese, the sauce. It's, it's going to be brought in from somewhere else. It's really it's just all that the water. Same. Right. You know, and, and the water thing, you know, I think a lot of times is, I mean, depending on where you are, like the North Carolina water is, is not bad. So, you know, we use a filter. There's nothing wrong with the water. You know, Florida, you may have some bigger issues, you know, because they have, you know, higher, you know, toxicities in the water that they have to maybe, you know, filter it to. But, um, you know, I think a lot, you know, a lot of New Yorkers are very prideful about their pizza, their pizza place. And you couldn't possibly make it as good down there or, you know, it's got to be the water. You know, you really just, you know, got to know what you're doing. I mean, at the end of the day, and any yeah. good pizza maker 
is, you know, pizza, you know, making dough, making the pizza, the style, the, you know, your techniques, all that stuff. It, that's the art of pizza. Right. Science. So, yeah, I mean, there's a there's a science, you know, uh, you know, hand in hand with the art. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, there's nothing, you know, really, there's nothing different. It's just, you know, a lot of people that have come to North Carolina to make pizza weren't pizza guys before. So a lot of them are in the business. They they weren't pizza guys, so they don't really know the business. I grew up in the business. I've been doing pizza for 35 years. So, you know, I grew up knowing the business, all the ins and outs, those, yeah, I mean, development, all those things that, you know, uh, you need to do to make good pizza. So I think good pizza could be made anywhere. You know, if you have an elevation change, you got to make adjustments. If you don't, you know, if you you have bad water, you got to make, you know, adjustments. So, you know, it, it can be adjusted everywhere. It's just a matter of knowing what you're doing. So. so I love it. I love it. You're I really recommend anyone to shoot a follow over to you because you're doing things the right way. You know, you're in a place where a lot of people come to visit to to come get yeah. a good a good meal. Um you know, like I said, you keep the, keeping the traditions alive, good family man, passing it down to your kids and to the people around you. I think you're just a good example of, uh, you know, of, of just someone bringing forward the Italian culture. And I, I thank you for everything you do, you know, you're doing a good job. I appreciate keep it that. Up. You know, and, and I really, uh, you know, it's as, as much as uh, people talk neg- negatively about, you know, today, social media and technology, uh, you know, the one positive I take out of it is, you know, I never would have met you and, and, you know, there are people in the Italian American community that, that I'm starting to connect to and want to connect to and, and, you know, keep that stuff alive because, you know, as, as, as uh, the generations pass, obviously, you know, things get watered down and, and, uh, you know, I think it's important for us to stay connected and, and, you know, keep, keep things strong and break bread with whenever we get together. Cause it's going to happen. Gonna, you know, Absolutely. you're going to come up. I'm going to come down. Like, well, I already did. I went to, to come down to visit with my buddies. I came to visit. Right. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Those things are important. Very important. Well, Vinny, I'm glad that you uh, figured out your, your volume for the, for the zoom. <laughs> yeah. That we'd be able to have you on. Well, I'll, I'll say that I didn't, but <laughs> I'm glad I could <laughs> participate. <laughs> I know. I know. We both have a, a you know crazy days and stuff. It's one of your, day, your days off. You're not around the peach. I'm sure you're going to be there later. Oh yeah. <laughs> to do something. <laughs> oh yeah. Never. There's never a day off in ownership. You know. No. No. Let me see that shirt real quick. Stand up. Well, you got that? Espresso. So this. Yeah. This is uh, uh, my espresso shirt uh, from a, a coffee company that uh, that uh, makes pretty good coffee. So it's actually a veteran-owned company. Um, okay. And they do a great job with coffee, and uh, I'm always uh, up to support veterans. Shoot me a uh, a a positive um, message to everyone out there. I want I want I want to get like a good a good some good quote of the day from you. A good quote of the day. Oh gosh, that's you put me on the spot here. Uh, I, that's what we got to do. This is a podcast. We got to get people on the spot. Think about it. Think of some a positive memo for the world. Yeah. Um, Entrepreneurship you know, could be could be related to that. Could be related to passion. The culture and keeping something alive. Your Instagram every day, what to post. Yeah, um, you know, I think uh, you know, I'd like to see the Italian American community, you know, come together more. I, you know, I think over the years, especially I was a kid, you know, slowly, you know, and even from Italy, you know, as you, as all the Italians kind of, you know, one group is wants to be better than the other, and and I think we have to stay together. I, you know. And I know that that's hard because everybody feels like, you know, that theirs is better than the other guys. And, um, you know, I think uh, the one thing I learned as an Italian American is that I have Italian passion and you have Italian passion, but it's not about just the regionality. We all bring our regionality to the table, but we got to, you know, we got to stay together uh, as a group because, you know, I think we get, we get fractured and, and, uh, and we lose, you know, our core values. And there are a lot of core values that are important that I think uh, that we have to pass on, you know, to the next generation. And, uh, and I think those things are important. And, you know, I, I'm going to keep pushing to try to keep the, you know, the community together. I agree with that. I think also, I think you're starting to see it, especially 
through this pandemic and through through just the history of what's happening with Italy, you're having a lot of young people leave. They've been out of the country for some time. Um, you're starting to see even people who've lost a little bit of it start to rekindle a little bit of that passion or wanting to give it to their kids, putting them in some sort of like, you know, trying to guide them in that direction. But you're starting to see a lot of even the Italian culture come here and get that, like, make that, um, just like provide to, to, to something to hold on to. I see it. Agreed. I see it more. I think you're going to see it more of a trend. I think you're going to start seeing a lot of Italians who left come back. Yeah, bringing, I hope so. Bringing the money or their skills back. You know, you're. I think you'll see that in the, in the future. Maybe not next year, but in the next 10 years, 20 years, I think so. When she, I talk to every Italian that leaves, wants to go back and and bring back something to their country. Yeah, they all want that's, to. Absolutely. And uh, I think, you know, with, with, you know, guys like you that lead in social media, I think, uh, I, I hope that that continues. I think that's the next, you know, I think for Sauce Day, I think Sauce Day needs to become a bigger thing for sure. Absolutely. Uh, for sure. Let's make that for next year. Let's make it like a, like a, a national sauce day. Uh, <laughs> national hey, sauce, uh, like a, uh, national, a national sauce committee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> That's funny. All right, brother. Listen, let me go. Cause I got, we got a few things to do today, yep. and, uh, but I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, and I appreciate, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to put me on and uh, listen to my uh, somewhat boring story, but um yeah, it's it's you know it's guys like you that lead out there that uh, that you know I appreciate. It's not at all, man. You you did it. You went and you went to you took a chance. You started the business. You grew a business. You like you're doing something that promotes just like what you knew and what you were taught in life from, the, from when you were younger. Like, I, and I think now especially with the pandemic, I feel like a lot of people need to come into that that kind of terms. Like you're seeing a lot of people move to new places and start something new. So whether yeah. you did it 20 years ago or today it's still that frame of mind to have. So I think it's, it's a good story to tell. It's a good story to be proud of for sure. Yeah. I mean, I lead. Yeah. I mean, because I'm an old schooler, I kind of, you know, I kind of lead quietly, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's why I appreciate somebody like you that, you know, can give it a voice. Yeah. And, and listen, if anyone has, I'm sure, you know, you're always someone to reach out to, like if you have any questions and whatnot. So I'm going to attach all your information, you know, shoot a follow to your page first and foremost, but also like if they have any questions, even on, on whatever the case is, I'm sure you'd be more than happy to. to Absolutely. I, I love to connect to people. Sure. Hmm. All right, Vinny. Well, listen, I'll talk, we'll talk, uh, we'll talk soon. All right, man. Grazie tutti, uh, uh, Lorenzo. All right. Ciao, buddy. Ciao.